Hello, my dear gardening friends. Today, in this video, we are going to talk about these pesky problems uh, which a lot of gardeners are facing in their garden. And this, the pesky problem is black spot. Recently, I received a message from Somia. Excuse me if I pronounce your word, your name incorrectly. But Somia came across as a very desperate gardener who recently purchased six roses and three of them got completely defoliated thanks to black spot. So this video is about that. What black spot is, the cycle of life of black spot in our garden through the year. I firmly believe when we understand the nature of a problem, then we are able to treat that problem much better. And then finally, different solutions starting from the uh, most hum harmless and um, easiest solution how to treat rose and it goes step by step, getting more and more complicated and mm, I would say more dangerous. So I was uh, raising roses, I am uh, uh, raising roses in my garden for 10 years already and black spot is uh, like a, this pesky little uh, friend always living in the garden. So the message is black spot is always there in the garden. In case you're looking for this wonderful remedy where you can, you can get rid of black spot once and for all, it doesn't exist because black spot is there. It's everywhere. The pores of black spot is everywhere in our gardens. And when roses are susceptible to, to this disease, then we have a problem. So first of all, what black spot is? It's a, a fungal disease of uh, the leaves, the foliage of our roses, if we are talking only about roses. And uh, this fungal disease creates spots on, on the leaves. The spots on the leaves come only on the top of the rose, so the bottom of the rose is clean. The bottom of the leaf of the rose is clean. And uh, the spots are not well defined, they have these feathery edges to them. and uh, the leaf, when it is infected by black spot, it can be turn yellow and can get, uh, and your rose can get completely defoliated. So once the leaf is infected, uh, it starts to get, usually it starts to yellow and then it drops on the ground. So this is black spot. Now, how black spot lives in our garden through the year? When spring comes and our roses are ready to open their leaves and meet the sun, black spot starts to wake up too. The spores of black spot germinate. The spring conditions are usually very favorable to uh, black spot spores because um, it's getting warmer, the humidity is there, the rain is there, and this is the best time, the time of spring, to start treating your roses for black spot. We don't see our we don't see the damage in spring yet. Our roses has this beautiful lush foliage, the beautiful flowers are coming. And only when it is kind of late, at the end of summer, when the damage is starting to be too dangerous and too big, we start worrying about black spot. But that's also almost like um, gone train. It's too late to do anything about spot, black spot at that time. So the preventive measures should be done should start in spring when rose is waking up from its dormancy time. Black spot needs at least six hours to, for the pores to germinate. And some areas uh, in the world which has where there are very dry conditions, people don't have to deal with black spot at all. I garden in zone 7 northeast USA and we have uh, very humid conditions here and roses are generally very susceptible to black spot. I live with black spot in my garden like on a regular basis. So the trick is to keep this black spot under control because once we have those six hours of wetness on the leaves, I'm not talking about humidity in the air, like real wetness, the leaves are wet for six hours, that's when black spot pores germinate and they start spreading around with the help of wind and water. So uh, 
that's the cycle of black spot. It goes into winter together with a rose. It overwinters on leaves and stems. So I'm going to talk about it later, what's the best way to break that cycle of uh, life of black spot germs on our leaves and on the stems on the rose. So here we are. The first basic level, how to take care of the roses to make sure that they are healthy, is prevention. This is like a biggest uh, foundational um, platform for everybody who wants to have healthy roses. We approach the care of our roses with prevention in our head. And what do I mean? By prevention means uh, you go to the store and you take your phone with you and you research the rose which you are buying. I highly recommend to people who uh, really are bothered by um, uh, how black spot looks on their roses. And I don't mean complete defoliation, I mean a little bit of black spot, which for me is fine. They should research, they should look into the roses which are disease resistant, highly disease resistant. And there are plenty right now on the market. They're not my favorite. Um, I know a lot of people would be against me for not liking knockout roses or landscape roses. I just don't like their... Uh, Okay, I'm not going to talk about that because this is my personal preference. But people want disease-resistant roses and if they are not ready to work on their roses, they should go there. They should invest into landscape roses or roses which are, uh, other roses which are highly disease-resistant and there are plenty of them on the market. But if people want these, they wonderful, beautiful, luxurious uh, roses in their garden which are highly... Uh, they have a lot of character to them. They, you know, people pass by and they stop and they say, oh, what beauty. There is a beauty to that rose. There is a character to that rose. That rose speaks to your heart. Then if you want something like that in your garden, you should be ready to invest some energy and time to take care of that rose well, not to let that rose to be neglected and look like a petty little thing growing in your garden. Because if we grow somewhat disease-prone um, disease roses in our garden and we neglect them, they look quite bad. So if you're not ready to um, pamper your roses, not pamper your roses, but pay attention to some degree to your roses, please go and buy landscape roses or very disease-resistant roses. Now I uh, garden for, I grow roses maybe for 10 years already. Uh, uh, if I would, I would love to have this big, beautiful uh, plot of land where I can plant all sorts of roses and just enjoy the variety of it. I don't have a big lot, so my rose collection is somewhat limited. But um, so yeah, I realize that I'm becoming more relaxed about rose diseases, and because I invest so much time and energy into the healthy soil, I truly believe that. Part of prevention of all the diseases on the roses, not black spot only, is to really pay strong attention to a very healthy soil. And that soil is the base of a health of a rose. So your rose would be able to fight all sorts of slugs and snails much better, all sorts of diseases much better. Because the soil is so healthy, your rose will be much healthier. And a lot of people kind of overlook that. In, and uh, in one of my future videos, I, I will devote one video completely to why soil is so important, why organic soil is so important to the health of the rose. I talked about it in my previous videos, but I think it, this topic deserves a separate solid video. Oh gosh, okay, let's go back to roses. So prevention. Prevention is, another part of prevention would be good sanitation. And by this I mean, when you take care of the rose and at the end of the, uh, and you water your rose, you make sure that you do not do this over your rose, especially at the end of uh, the day and you have this fan uh, a shape watering of your rose. That's a worst case scenario what can happen to a rose. You water the leaves at the end of the day because rose goes into the night wet. Definitely six hours would be there for the spores of the black spot to germinate and here we go. The problem is multiplying very fast. So in a week you will start to have 
critical conditions spreading all over your rose. So what we do, usually uh, dripping irrigation is very good for roses. I don't have it. I usually water my rose with a hose. So what I do, I don't even, before I used to uh, use the hose on strong speed, because there is no time, you know, to just water rose at the bottom, but there is some amount of splashing going on. So now what I do, I just leave a hose on a very small volume and I water rose for five, 10 minutes. This way a rose gets all the water it needs. It's a deep watering. That's what rose needs, not often, but deep and no splashes happens. My leaves are dry. So big part of prevention is to keep your rose as dry as possible. Of course, we can say nothing about rain right now. It's raining outside and it's going to rain all day and maybe all day tomorrow. So uh, we can't control rain, but we can control how we water our roses. Now, another big thing is to actively try to uh, disrupt the cycle of disease. So what I mean by that is when you go, when you have fall conditions and your rose is dropping leaves, maybe because of black spot or maybe because just as, as the rose is ready to go into dormancy, I make sure this is the biggest time of my fall uh, days. I make sure that I collect every single leaf around that rose. And because I use uh, uh, bark chips around the rose, it's kind of difficult to do that. But I literally go under my rose with my hands and my I spent a good half an hour near every bush just trying to get rid of all those leaves. And those leaves don't end up in their compost pile. They go straight into the garbage because those leaves harbor these beautiful pores of black spot, which are waiting there to overwhelm winter and next spring they will be there to reinfect my rose and spread all over again. So I make sure that I put all those leaves into the garbage. The other thing is that uh, black spot overwinters, overwinters on canes too. So I can do nothing about canes. I can get rid of all the leaves but not canes. So here comes another way of dealing with black spot which is biological. My favorite one. Because um, uh, there are a lot of beautiful products now coming up on the market since uh, organic gardening is becoming quite popular and I'm like, quite happy about it. So there are a lot of products to choose from to treat all sorts of diseases of roses. The only thing about organic products uh, for roses would be that you have to apply them more often and they are not as effective as uh, synthetic uh, systemic uh, fungicides, but I'm okay with that. I'm ready to compromise. I can live with a little bit of black spot in the garden. So what I like is uh, I like Bonite products. Uh, I like products which are based on neem oil. And there are a lot of different them. Captain Jack, I will put all of them on the screen here for your reference. They are readily available everywhere on the market. And there are a lot of labels based on the neem oil. What you have to look at, what are the ingredients? And you will see neem oil is the first ingredient. That's what you have to go for. You have to apply neem oil, follow the directions, uh, start early in the season. And uh, maybe you have to apply it every week. I use this special sprayer. I will, uh, I will be showing you in spring how I do that. And I go ahead and I spray all my roses. And I know that it's not really strong fungicide, that it's not going to hurt the environment too much. So that's the biological approach to roses. Also, what I like to do in the middle of winter I buy this dormant horticultural spray and I like to buy it in concentrate formula because I can mix it myself and it, I can use it much longer. It's a more convenient way to do things because if you buy it in a spray bottle, you use it quickly and it's finished. You have to go back and buy again, but con look for concentrated versions and there are all instructions at the back. It's easy to pre-mix. Um, I spray, I use that uh, dormant horticultural oil in winter. I spray some other bushes in my garden and I also do that spray on roses. Uh, dormant oil has to be used only on dormant uh, uh, roses. We don't want to use that oil on um, roses which are leafing out in spring because uh, the leaves can burn. With that spray on, leaves can burn under the sun. But what that oil does, dormant oil, it coats all the stems on the row of the rose and it uh, uh, 
coats all the pores and all sorts of parasite eggs and all sorts of things overwintering on the canes of your rose and it diminishes the population of all sorts of diseases. So that's what I do. And because I use natural stuff, my roses are prone to black spot. Not as much, not to the point of defoliation. But uh, in case your roses are defoliated, something needs to be done about it. And uh, then we are moving into a next step, into a synthetic uh, fungicides. Uh, one product which I might be using in the future because our fall is getting, our autumn is getting so warm that roses are dealing with black spots so much longer. And uh, some of my roses are getting uh, on the borderline of losing their leaves. Not all, not, not to that extent, but still a little bit too, too much of loss of leaves. So what David Austin recommends is this product on the screen. I never used it, but it's highly recommended um, by David Austin company. And I do love David Austin roses. I'm in love with those beauties. Um, I would highly recommend those roses to you if you want to enjoy the beauty in your garden, the character roses in your garden. I would advise for people to look for a good for health label on the roses in case you want something healthy in your garden and you're not ready to fight diseases on a regular basis. So when you're ready to buy roses, look for good for health um, labels on the rose. Usually I look for good for health and good for blooming or good for scent to combine different uh, features of the rose. So these are the products and of course there are plenty of different uh, heavy fungicides, pesticides on the market. Oh gosh, uh, there are a lot of different ones and you really have to be very careful when you use them because they can be harmful to you. Uh, again, use if you decide to do that, make sure that you apply those products in the morning when the, it's not very windy because you don't want accidentally all those products ending on your skin or even worse, inhaling all that stuff. So after all this, the encouraging message to Somia would be, don't despair. Roses are tenacious survivors. They were here since uh, 5,000 years ago. I believe 5,000 years ago, the first mention of the rose is there, <clears throat> excuse me, in some manuscripts. What will happen with you? you, you might say, okay, my rose is completely defoliated. So then what do I do? Don't despair. If you are in the fall conditions, put your rose into dormancy. Let your rose go to dormancy. Make sure you do good sanitation. Make sure that you, if you're in cold climate, you make sure that the root system is well protected and let your rose go to dormancy. And in spring, start, start to be very proactive in treating black spot from the very beginning, which is kind of counterintuitive because we don't see a disease at that time when roses all nice and happy and leaves are so beautiful and shiny and sun is there and blooms are coming. So we sometimes kind of forget that we need to treat our roses now. But if your rose went into this uh, shock of complete defoliation in the middle of uh, the season or you live in warmer climates, I'm not sure where Somia is, your rose might go into dormancy, into this sh induced dormancy. I had this situation happen in my garden. One of my roses was completely defoliated by rabbits. So my rose went into dormancy for good I would say one month and only now it starts leafing out. So if your rose is not doing any signs of life, don't despair. There is enough energy in the root system of the rose to take this little break, recuperate, and then starting next spring or, in your warm, or if you are in a warm climate, your rose might rest a little bit and then the new flush will start again. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I look forward to your comments and questions under the video. Please do subscribe and happy gardening. Enjoy your gardens and I will see you next time.